<laughs> I'm David Glick. Sally was hoping to be here and give this presentation, but uh, she unfortunately fell and injured herself uh, a week ago and wasn't able to make it to the conference. So she's uh, sitting at home uh, and uh, sent me this, the slides, but I've done a lot of work on some of these tools, so I can hopefully tell you a bit about them. Uh, so I'm going to be talking about Plone and Salesforce.com. Uh, Carlos is also listed here because he's worked on uh, some of the stuff that I'm going to show you later on, so he can help answer questions then. So what is Salesforce.com? I'm going to assume you all know what Plone is. Uh, Salesforce is a CRM, which is, if you're a for-profit, that's a customer relationship management. If you're a non-profit, that's constituent relationship management. But basically, it's keeping track of who are the people that your organization has a relationship with, and what's that relationship? How have the people interacted with you over time, and how might you be able to engage them more in the future? Um, it's a well-established uh, product, a uh, commercial product. Um, it's not just a CRM, it's also sort of a cloud platform for building applications. It's got a, a database built in, you can create many you know, custom objects. Uh, it's got a very powerful uh, reporting system, which I think is one of its uh, strong points. I got involved with uh, using Salesforce because I worked for Groundwire, which did a lot of work with nonprofit organizations. And uh, along with Salesforce, the product, um, and the company, there is also a, an organization called the Salesforce Foundation. And the Salesforce Foundation exists to help nonprofits use Salesforce, uh, largely by giving them uh, free and discounted licenses. So if you are uh, a nonprofit, I know this is the case for any 501c3 organization in the United States, but I'm, uh, I looked and, and it says also uh, to contact them uh, from uh, other countries uh, to ask about it. Uh, you can get uh, 10 free licenses um, for Salesforce uh, to use uh, for free, and then you can also get a discount on other services. Um, so we uh, decided uh, back in 2005 to build a toolkit for integrating Plone and Salesforce. Plone is good at content. Salesforce is good at keeping track of relationships with people. Uh, a nonprofit uh, website usually needs uh, some of both. So there was an initial integration uh, that was done uh, by uh, what was then One Northwest and later became Groundwire uh, to, to build a bunch of libraries. Um, thinking about the nonprofit use case, but trying to build things that are generic enough to be useful for uh, other projects as well. Um, so we started off, uh, we created Beatbox, which is a library for just talking to the Salesforce API, which um, at that point was a SOAP API. Salesforce Base Connector then uses Beatbox and uh, lets you call it from Plone. Basically, it, it adds a tool in, uh, in Zoap that stores the username and password so that you can make calls to Salesforce without having to pass those along every time. There's Salesforce Plone Form Gen Adapter, and this uh, you know, Plone Form Gen is a very powerful tool for building custom forms uh, for, by a non-developer in Plone. This lets you take all the fields in that form and say, create an object in Salesforce, you know, like a lead or a contact, and put all those fields on it. So it's useful for, you know, you're signing up people for your newsletter, um, that sort of, you know, basic data collection, getting people into your database. Uh, but it's also quite powerful, and you can do things like create several objects that are joined together, um, have you know, some custom uh, expressions for you know, storing the current date or, or whatever. Salesforce Auth plugin is a, a pass plugin, so you can log into your Plone site uh, using information stored in Salesforce. Uh, you know, if you've got a username and password on your contact in Salesforce, log that person in. I wouldn't actually recommend using that package. It, it is a little bit, uh, it's a little slow. Uh, when you have to talk to Salesforce, and uh, we we got some good caching in it, but there's still a few places where if you you know go to the users and groups panel and you have too many users, it'll just you know sit there and suck down way too much data. Over the years, we built a lot of other little things, um, which some are better than others. PayPal to Salesforce lead was actually the first Python package that I ever built. 
uh, a few weeks after I started at Groundwire. And it basically just receives a ping from PayPal when somebody makes a donation to your organization uh, and sends it on to Salesforce uh, to create a lead there. Uh, and then Salesforce Order Recorder was sort of a, a similar thing that integrated with uh, the Get Paid product for um, uh, handling e-commerce in your phone site. There's collective.salesforce.rsvp, which was a tool for if you have an event in Plone, allowing people to register it uh, for it. So it would add a uh, portlet with a registration form um, on your event, um, and you would fill out your name, and, and it would go into Salesforce. Not paid registration, but just you know signing up for a free event. And then there's Megaphone. Uh, Megaphone is a Plone product uh, for doing online advocacy. If you want people to uh, write letters or sign petitions and send them to people in government uh, or other decision makers, uh, you can do that with Megaphone. You can optionally connect it to Salesforce so that every time somebody signs, it'll create a record in your uh, CRM. Uh, <clears throat> final product that we made uh, at Groundwire was Collective Salesforce content. And we found a, uh, a lot of cases where we wanted to take um, you know, a table of data that uh, was often being managed in Salesforce by uh, staff members of an organization. and publish it on the web. Um, you know, maybe it's a database of uh, locations for uh, you know, where there are offices of the organization, or maybe it was a database of uh, any number of different things. Uh, so we, we create this package which lets you create a, uh, a content type in Plone, a dexterity content type, uh, and say, this content type is connected to that object type in Salesforce, and here's how the fields map over. Um, and then you can have a cron job that runs uh, periodically um, and queries Salesforce for all the objects and then updates the ones in Plone. And then you can you know, build a Plone user interface using Fasted Navigation or whatever Plone tool you want. That's sort of uh, the quick overview of all the, the Salesforce products that uh, have been created over the past six or seven years. I'm now going to shift to talk about some new uh, tools that we've been developing um, more in the, the past year and a half. One of those is uh, a great tool for fundraising. Um, there's a guy named Jason Lance who's been at Plone Events occasionally. Uh, and he uh, was working for the Innocence Project, which is a large NGO uh, in the States. Um, and he was working on their fundraising um, and you know having a site for people to uh, contribute money to the organization and for them to run campaigns uh, to, to get money. And so Jason had this vision for creating a, uh, a turnkey fundraising site. So uh, a plot product for Plone that you install and you've got a fundraising site in Plone. Uh, and he really wanted to do this in Plone uh, so that he would ha could take advantage of all of Plone's uh, content management uh, facilities so that you can have not just your fundraising pages but also uh, have that be in your uh, full site structure with you know other information and pages and so forth. Um, so this this is really Jason's project. Um, I did a little bit of work uh, helping him out at the beginning, and Jazz Carta did some work uh, helping him out uh, towards the end. But it, it, he was really the driving force and um, uh, behind a lot of the decisions. So what is uh, what is been created is a package called collective.salesforce.fundraising. Uh, and it's uh, a fundraising system. Uh, it, it mostly is a Plone application uh, built with Dexterity. Uh, it lets you create a page for a campaign, uh, which I'll show you in a minute. Um, show uh, wh you know, what's the goal, how much money are we trying to raise, how far are we along towards that. It also has a pretty cool feature called personal fundraising, which is once you've got this main campaign, uh, people can register for the site and say, I want to help raise money for this thing. Uh, and they get their own page in the site where they can have their own goal and they can send this link to people and they can you know, go to that page to contribute and it'll get uh, associated with that person. Um, so it, it's a common model for uh, you know, distributed fundraising. The integration with Salesforce is uh, a core piece of this and it's, it's built using collective.salesforce.content, um, which, which means that changes that happen in Salesforce are mirrored in Plone. And he's also doing some things so that when you make a payment, um, 
through, through the Plone site, uh, it'll write some information to Salesforce. Um, so yeah, it does all the payment processing. Uh, Jason integrated uh, Plone with Stripe, which is a um, uh, software as a service uh, for uh, doing your payment processing. Uh, sort of like authorized.net, but better. Um, th the thing that's really cool about Stripe is your, the credit card data never touches your server. They submit it by JavaScript to Stripe, get back a token that identifies the um, transaction, and then they send, you can send that back to your server and um, the ser on the server side can process the credit card without ever having to, to see it. Uh, so it's much easier to be secure. Um, and then also uh, Jason integrated the, the login for the site uh, with Janrain's RPX service, which is, uh, lets you log in against Google or Twitter or Facebook or any number of different things um, so that people can come and easily register to create their personal uh, campaign. So this is uh, what it looks like in the wild uh, on Innocence Project's site. Um, this is sort of the page just listing different campaigns. The next one is what a single campaign looks like. And you, you, know, you have a nice banner at the top. You've got information. You've got, um, actually doesn't show it here, but you'll see on the next one the, the widget for donating and choosing your amount to donate. And then over on the right, you've got the uh, progress bar and you know some some badges uh, just indicating uh, you know the status of the organization as you know being a you know recommended as a, a nonprofit to donate to uh, we have an announcement to make uh, I'm making on behalf of, of Jason Lance and, and Liz Letty which is at the um, Plone symposium this year uh, we were talking and Jason had this fundraising tool that he'd been working on, and Liz was really starting to gear up the fundraising for uh, the Plone Foundation. And so they thought, well, wouldn't it be cool if we set this up for the Plone Foundation, use that for testing? So uh, Jason is just in the process of, uh, of launching this thing, uh, or at least getting it going for testing. Uh, so you can all go here to uh, plonedemo.muselab.com slash donate, which is missing there. Um, but you'll see the donate button, and uh, you can see what this looks like. Uh, you can give some money to the foundation if you haven't yet. Um, set up your monthly donation, um, and et cetera. If you're interested in learning more about this or contributing to the effort, uh, I'd recommend um, getting in touch with Jason or Liz, and I can help uh, put you in touch with them if you're interested. Um, there was some talk of, I, I'm not sure if they're sprinting remotely they aren't here, but they might be sprinting remotely this weekend. So Jason had built this thing, um, and uh, it's working great uh, for the Innocence Project, but he noticed a few uh, problems with it. Uh, it was a little bit too hard to add new payment processors or you know, talk to something other than Salesforce. Um, so he's now uh, has an effort underway to sort of modularize it and break it apart into a number of different packages. Um, so the, the idea is there's, you know, the core package that has some, some content types and there's the site package that actually integrates it into your Plone site and then there's different packages for integrating with payment processors and you know, Salesforce and the login system and uh, email systems. Uh, I'm going to talk a little bit about the project I've been working on lately, which is... Uh, a big, uh, a big nonprofit website uh, that handles registration for courses for a, non a nonprofit that runs, uh, that does education about mountain climbing and hiking and, and so forth. Um, so they've got a really big clone site, uh, mostly big because of the number of users. And we're um, actually mirroring most of that data into Salesforce. So Plone is the canonical place where a lot of this stuff is edited. But we're also shoving it into Salesforce uh, so that we can so that they can use Salesforce's reporting tools. And in doing this, we've taken the opportunity to sort of look back and reimagine how a lot of these tools should work um, that we had built in the past. So one problem uh, was Salesforce's API. Like I said, it's a SOAP API. Who likes SOAP? <laughs> Who's used SOAP? I should say. Yeah. So you know you know what I'm talking about. Um, Salesforce now has a REST API. Uh, that's something that has come along in the past five years uh, since the original work was done. 
and it's a lot nicer to work with. And there's a um, package uh, for Python that somebody has created already. Uh, uh, I think they're called the New Organizing Institute. It's called Simple Salesforce, and it looks like this. So you create a Salesforce object, you pass in uh, username and password, and then you can just, you know, salesforce.contact.insert, and you pass it a dictionary, and it's, it's a lot nicer. Um, so we're using this for all of our work in the new project, uh, and I'm really happy with it. It's like uh, Beatbox was like several thousand lines of code that was like reading XML and transforming it into Python, and Simple Salesforce is like 400 lines of code that uses the request library and doesn't really do anything. Well, it does a lot with, with very little. Uh, the other big innovation we've been doing is working on message queuing. So we had these problems, uh, you know, you got these forms that are submitting to Salesforce and you click the button, and then the backend server goes and talks to Salesforce and that takes a while and your user sits around and gets bored and then it comes back. And then also it meant that if Salesforce was down, uh, then you'd hit an error and you'd show that to the user. So of course the solution is to use a message queue. And whenever something happens in your clone site that needs to happen in Salesforce, you just shove a task onto the queue, and then the queue takes care of processing that and handling the error and retrying it when it can and that sort of thing. So we did a bit of uh, research into message queues, and there's a lot of message queues out there. Um, and we thought about using uh, one of the existing integrations with Plone. There's uh, you know, Plone App Async, there's uh, ZAMPQ, whatever the thing is that, um, uh, oh, what's the Finnish guy, Osco has been working on. Um, and, and what we realized is that all of these tools are quite a bit of code to get a message queue up and running. And we were a little bit leery of using one of the, the Plone solutions, which is, you know, questionably maintained. Not, I mean, it, they're maintained, but only by one person or, or a couple people. And, and, you know, if something goes wrong, are we really going to be able to count on the problem getting fixed? Um, so we, we decided to go with Celery, which is a very commonly used system in the Django world um, and has a, a community around it and a lot of tools around it. Um, one of the things that sold me on Celery was seeing like, oh, somebody has already created Flower, which is a, a UI, a browser-based tool for looking at what's in the queue and seeing uh, what the results have been and so forth. Um, so we're using Celery. We're using RabbitMQ as the back end, which is uh, you know, the default back end for Celery. I was at first you know, both excited and scared about integrating Celery with Zoop. You know, what's, what's this going to take? Uh, it's actually, it was a lot easier than I thought. Uh, the main thing uh, is uh, dealing with Zoop transactions. Um, if, you, if, you've got, if you're processing something in Zoop and you're calling out to an external system to, you know, write to Salesforce or to process a credit card or something like that, um, Zoop's got this great feature where if you write to the database and you hit a conflict error, it'll catch that and it'll retry the entire request. Well, that means it'll, you know, requeue your task that's going to uh, talk to your external system multiple times and you're, you're going to end up with multiple entries in your database or you're going to end up with processing your credit card multiple times. And that's not so good. Um, so the way we solved this was um, the ZODB has what's called an after commit hook, which basically says run this function after the commit has succeeded. Um, so whenever we want to queue something, uh, we've got, uh, we're, we're, we're setting it up that way. So it's not actually going to get put on the queue until the end of the transaction. Um, and that works pretty well. We've got a, a decorator. So basically all you uh, have to do is you say, instead of saying this is a task, you say this is an after commit task. And then um, that'll happen. The other thing was uh, we have some tasks. There's, there's some that are pushing things out to Salesforce. Um, we're also sort of replacing the functionality of collective.salesforce.content in pulling data into Plone. And so we've got uh, what I've called a Zoop task, which is um, some code that'll run, uh, but before it runs, it starts a transaction and it traverses to your site, um, and, and then it runs your code, and then it uh, commits a transaction and it'll retry it if, if there are conflicts. So it's sort of more like the um, standard, uh, you know, what the Zoop publisher does, but it's running in your, your uh, task processor. Um, I haven't gotten around to packaging any of the stuff up, but I've got sort of the, the basic uh, 
code that's needed, and it's only a page or two of code uh, on a gist on my GitHub account, so I can show that to anybody who's interested. Um, yeah, so future work that, that may happen is uh, taking some of these, you know, use of simple Salesforce and use of the message queue and maybe trying to create a, a package that makes it a little bit easier for people to get up and running with that uh, rather than gluing all the pieces together. Um, and, and once that exists, uh, there would be a possibility for sort of taking the old suite of products that were built on Beatbox and Salesforce Space Connector and creating sort of modern versions that are, are built on the, the better uh, API tools. This is sort of, you know, not something I'm planning on pursuing in, unless I've got uh, clients uh, who are interested in, in having it, but I think that something really nice could be created. Um, and I'd be happy to hear from anybody who is interested in that. Just to say a little bit about um, how Plone's Salesforce tools compare to uh, our competitors. Um, I don't actually, I haven't, these are all Sally's slides and I haven't done the research myself, so I'm not gonna be able to tell you much more than what's on the slides, but um, in Drupal, there's a uh, Salesforce suite, which is sort of, uh, mostly takes care of synchronizing objects between, Plone, or between Drupal and, and Salesforce, uh, sort of like what, what you do with uh, collective Salesforce content. Uh, there's Springboard, which is sort of uh, the analog to the fundraising uh, toolkit, uh, when you do fundraising in Drupal. There's Red Hen, which I guess is a, a CRM that just, you know, lives within Drupal, but integrates with Salesforce. Uh, on the Joomla side, there's uh, Joomforce. <laughs> uh, and this is sort of just basic, you know, capturing of leads. Uh, not too much functionality. Uh, WordPress also has uh, something along those lines. Um, and then uh, this other product, which actually lets you, you know, have some custom fields that you're pushing into Salesforce, but not quite the same uh, depth of features that we've got in, uh, that, that Drupal has and that we've got in, in the Plone toolkit. Um, so yeah, generally we're a little bit ahead of, of Joomla and WordPress, but uh, sort of on par with Drupal in terms of uh, the feature set that's available. And uh, yeah, that's what I've got on, on Plone and Salesforce. Uh, any questions? Matt? Uh, the question is whether I've uh, seen Velruse as an alternative to Janeray and RPX. Uh, Velruse is, uh, is, is sort of for the pyramid world, isn't it? I see, it's a pyramid app that handles uh, same thing as, as RPX in terms of logging in against different services. Cool. Yeah, because I, I think RPX is, is only free for nonprofit organizations. Yeah. Other questions? The, the question's about getting the, the license donation from the Salesforce Foundation for nonprofits that are located outside the United States. Um, I was looking this up last night because I figured it would come up as a question, and um, basically what the site says is, you know, contact us. So, yeah, do that. <laughs> but it, it, it sounds like it may be possible in some cases. But I, I, I don't have a, a particular case in mind that I uh, can speak from experience. All right, well, thank you very much.